So in the last lecture, we have seen uh, various properties of uh, compact spaces. And now we come to the uh, one of the main theorems about compact spaces, which is the heine borel theorem. So you might have seen it in your analysis course or your calculus course. And uh, for real lines, it says that every uh, closed interval, closed interval of the form AB of the real line is compact. Uh, we will show it for uh, linear continuums. We will show this result for linear continuums. So our statement is that every closed interval AB of a linear continuum continuum x is compact. Now this is compactness in the subspace topology from the order topology on x. So uh, this is the statement of the heine borel theorem and uh, let us see a proof of this result. So to start off, uh, so we start with a collection, let A be a collection of open sets in X um, in the order topology open in the order topology which covers which covers the set AB and uh, uh, what we are going to do is define a set C which is the uh, set of points in this interval AB such that the set in the uh, closed interval from A to X can be covered by finitely many finitely many uh, open sets open sets in A open sets in, in this collection A so the idea is to show the idea is to show that B itself belongs to this uh, set C. So uh, we will have that uh, this is equivalent to saying that AB um, can be covered by finitely many open sets, many open sets in A, and, and this is the compactness. Uh, so AB has a finite subcover from A. So this will prove compactness of the closed interval AB. And so um, we have to show that the point B belongs to C. So uh, the first step is to take, take the supremum of the set C take the supremum of C. So let C naught be the supremum of C. So of course um, C uh, has an upper bound uh, since uh, B is an upper bound upper bound for C and this implies that C has a least upper bound or a supremum bound or supremum since x is a linear continuum as x is a linear continuum so this is the first property the least upper bound property of a linear continuum uh, that we see uh, that we uh, saw earlier and now uh, we will show two 
claims. So the first claim is that the supremum C0 belongs to C. Um, and the second claim is that uh, in fact C0 is equal to B. So the second is what we want to show. Um, so this, this would mean that uh, B belongs to C for example from 1. So uh, let us show the first claim. So if we prove these two claims we will uh, uh, will be done with the proof. So first let us show that C0 belongs to C. So suppose to the contrary we will use again an argument by contradiction. Suppose C0 does not belong to C. Uh, we start with the remark that uh, for any x in uh, the interval a b um, there exists uh, point y in the interval x b where it is open in x and closed in b so uh, x is strictly less than y it is less than or equal to b and it says that the set the interval from x to y can be covered by a single open set a naught in a so how do we choose such a y uh, so since a naught so first of all uh, let us choose uh, a naught which contains x so since the collection a covers the interval a b so this implies that there exists a set a naught in a such that x lies in this set a naught and now since a naught is open this implies that there exists a basis neighborhood basis neighborhood of x uh, say of the form of the form de which is a subset of a naught by the definition of the basis for the order topology and now uh, what we can do is uh, this means that there exists some y uh, such that it lies between x and e so we are here we are uh, again using the uh, fact that uh, x is a linear continuum so this means that the whole uh, interval from x to y is a subset of a naught so we just need uh, a single open set we can find a y such that the whole interval from x to y can be covered by a single open set and we will use this um, this property to show that uh, we will reach a contradiction if we assume that c naught does not belong to c so let's see uh, why this is true so since if c naught does not belong to c uh, the interval from a to c naught cannot be covered by finitely many finitely many um, open sets open sets in in the collection a this is how we defined c uh, the, the if a c naught uh, can be covered by finitely many open sets in a then that would imply that c naught will belong to c so um, uh, a c naught cannot be covered by finitely many open sets in a on the other hand take uh, an open set let's call it a a0 again uh, in a says that c naught belongs to a naught okay so now we are going to do a similar thing that we did for um, the previous argument so take uh, now uh, another uh, basis neighborhood uh, de 
of C naught says that the whole interval D E is a subset of A naught. However, however, uh, this means that this means that there exists a point Z in C says that it lies strictly between D and C0. So first of all, because C0 is the supremum of C, there are no points. Uh, so let me draw a picture here. So um, here is A, here is B, somewhere here is C0. So, uh, suppose that some, somewhere um, C0 lies somewhere in between A and B. And then we have this uh, open set DE, DE, and there is an open set, uh, let's call this A0, which contains this uh, integral DE. Now it is clear that uh, no point of uh, C can lie outside outside uh, DE, uh, which is greater than uh, E because that would imply and uh, that would violate the condition that c0 is a supremum of c so no points no points in c can lie in this region on the other hand if uh, there are no points of c in this region then that would uh, violate the condition that c0 is the least upper bound because uh, if so let me write this down. If there are no points of C in uh, the interval D C naught, uh, D C naught open, uh, then any point, uh, let's call it Y, says that d is less than y less than c0 is a, is a is an upper bound is an upper bound for c and this is a contradiction this is a contradiction as c0 is the supremum of c so it is the least upper bound so we have uh, found here a y which is le uh, less than c0 and it is an upper bound for C. So there must exist a point Z in C says that. Uh, so here there is a point Z uh, belonging to C which lies in between D and C naught. However, this means that, however, this implies that the set A uh, and A to Z can be covered by finitely many open sets in A, open sets in A because Z is in C, as Z is in C and this is how we define our set C. Uh, now on the other hand, <coughs> this means that um, the set AC0 can be written can be covered by finitely many open sets in A uh, by adding the set A0 to this collection. So uh, up to Z we have finitely many and the set uh, this set Z to C0 uh, lies completely inside A0. Therefore, uh, the set AC0 can be written as AC0 can be written as AZ union ZC0 and uh, this is contained uh, in uh, covered by finitely many covered by finitely many sets in A and this is covered by by a single set A0 so 
the whole thing um, a c0 can be uh, covered by finitely many sets in a but this uh, violates the condition this is a contradiction this is a contradiction to the fact that c0 um, this uh, is c0 cannot be in c so uh, we have shown that a c0 so uh, we see that so c0 must belong to c and so this proves the first claim uh, for the second claim we have to show that c0 is equal to b and uh, again we argue by contradiction so suppose that c0 is not equal to b and uh, so since a c0 can be covered by finitely many uh, sets in a and by the previous remark by the previous remark uh, there exists a y says that c0 is strictly less than y is strictly less than or equal to b such that we have that the whole set c0 y is a set as a subset of some set a1 in a for some a1 so <coughs> Uh, now uh, this this implies that the set a y this is the union of a c0 and c0 y and now this is uh, this can be covered can be covered by finitely many sets in a since uh, we can just add by adding the set a1 to the finite subcollection subcollection uh, covering the set a to c0 but this means that uh, y uh, belongs to c and and y as we have seen that y uh, was chosen to be greater than strictly greater than c and this is a contradiction contradiction since uh, c0 was is the supremum uh, of c so there can be no elements uh, y of c strictly greater than c0 so this uh, gives you a contradiction and so c0 is equal to b and therefore uh, this concludes the proof of the theorem